Please stand for the prayer. Please bow. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you humbly knowing that we don't deserve this moment, but you're gracious enough to let us make it this far anyway. God, we praise you because your name is above every name. We say thank you for the many blessings. Thank you for every faculty member, staff, administrator on this campus, for the hundreds of hours in classrooms filled with instructions, hard conversations, and life lessons. Thank you that they care for us more than students that they teach, for the time that they have spent pouring into us, for every coach and mentor who took the time to meet us right where we're at. We pray that the fruit of these relationships don't end here, but they continue to grow. Thank you for Ms. Ruth and her team for cleaning up after our mess and always speaking to us in the hallways. Thank you for an everlasting impact. Thank you for every parent, grandparent, guardian, family member, and friend who surrounds us here today. For car rides to and from school, Chick-fil-A runs, basketball games, and everything in between. We pray that we would not only show our gratitude through our words, but also our actions. Thank you for the time that they have sacrificed, that you have placed people in our lives to cheer us on and call us out that they continue to show us your love in every season of our life. For the people who showed up consistently for our play performances, games, school events, or when we just needed someone to talk to. We are grateful to have people who show up for us day in and day out. Please be with our parents. Would you give them peace, not only about our future, but theirs? God, I thank you for all 53 students graduating here today. For the ability to learn and grow and laugh with one another, for the good times and the bad, God, we know that without you, none of this will be possible. So we say thank you. Thank you for every student who will walk across this stage and embark on a new journey after today. Would you order our steps, remind us of our worth, and most importantly, will we never forget that you walk with us every step of the way. May we not be worried about all things, but trust in the God who uses all things for good. That we might not know what our next is, but there's peace in knowing that you are in our next. I pray that we remember that we will do things that are more important to you than a high school diploma, college degree, or any job we would work. God, I pray that we are the hands and feet of you wherever we go, that we will be the vessels that you use to spread the gospel. My prayer when we leave this place today is that we know that we are loved more than we ever can think or imagine. Will we not be quick to forget the memories and the relationships that came from this place? We love you and we're grateful for the many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please stand, or please join me in the singing of the alma mater. The words are printed in your program.
I'm now going to say our class verse. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Colossians 3, 14.
welcome to the commencement exercises of the 65th graduating class of Harding Academy. We're so glad you could be with us this evening and I'm thankful that we're here together to celebrate the class of 2023. It is my pleasure to introduce and honor the valedictorian and salutatorian of the class of 2023. We will hear from our salutatorian followed by our valedictorian. Each of them named what we call a star teacher, a teacher who has inspired them to learn, who has made them eager to learn, and who has broadened their perspective, who has stretched and pushed them. Salutatorian Wyatt Kirtley Thompson. <laughs> Wyatt is the son of Eric Thompson and Shelley Auntie Thompson. Wyatt has served through Mountaintop and MIFA's Meals on Wheels, as well as helping coach soccer clinics. Wyatt is a member of the National Beta Club, Mu Alpha Theta, and the 30 Plus Club, along with both the National English and Science Honor Societies. A talented artist, Wyatt was honored with gold and silver keys in the Scholastic Art Awards. He also received the Bausch & Lomb Honorary Science Award. Wyatt's star teacher is Ms. Robin Nickel, his art teacher at Houston Middle School in grades six through eight. Is Ms. Nicole able to be here? No. But I think she's watching us from home. Wyatt says of Ms. Nickel, she started me on my artistic journey, and without her pushing me to be the best artist I could be from a young age, I wouldn't be going into the architecture major that I am, and I wouldn't have the skill set that I have today. Wyatt Kirtley Thompson, salutatorian. Valedictorian Corwin Flynn Wilkes is the son of Scott and Andrea Wilkes. Flynn attends Park Avenue Church of Christ and is active in the youth group there. Flynn has served as the Mu Alpha Theta co-president, the Science National Honor Society vice president, and the chess club president. This year, Flynn was named a National Merit Scholar. Flynn's star teacher is Ms. Charlie Gonder, his advanced placement language and composition teacher in grade 11. Is Ms. Gonder here? She wasn't sure if she was going to be able to be here or not. Flynn said, I choose Ms. Gonder as my star teacher because she helped me develop my passion for writing, and through her teaching, I understood writing in a new way. Corwin Flynn Wilkes, valedictorian. We will hear from Wyatt and then from Flynn. Welcome Harding Academy graduates of the class of 2023. Before I start, I wanna thank Mr. Williamson, Ms. Ifong, the faculty and staff, our family members, and distinguished guests for being here today for this very special occasion. Now, I have to be honest, when I, I stuck to my nerdy ways when approaching this monumental task of giving a speech, and I researched what to do. I found simple formulas and videos of past graduates from schools from around the country, and I studied what made them so successful and engaging. Here's what I found that performs the best, self-deprecation, semi-uncomfortable jokes, and Drake lyrics. <laughs> Keeping that in mind, my job as salutatorian of the class of 2023 is to look back on our past. Unfortunately for me, my past with Harding consists of only two years, so I've really got to stretch this out. When I came to Harding, I didn't know what to expect, but as an outsider looking in, I found a small class that works well together, supports one another, and dances together. I would later find out that this wasn't always the case. I've heard stories of disunity and drama from the class of 23's past, but for the past two years that I've been here, that seems unimaginable. Between the SGA's organizational skills and everyone's else, everyone else's willingness to participate, it seems ridiculous to picture any sort of bickering has ever occurred among this class. As someone who still feels like a newbie, I have to say it's pretty impressive. While I might not have all the same high school experiences as most of you, I know we started off rough, started off rough with COVID. We were thrown into a world of unprecedented times, which only added to the stress in our already change-filled stage in life. However, going to school during a pandemic will definitely make for a cool story for future generations. We survived the terrors of 11.59 p.m. due dates and the annoyance of bad Wi-Fi during Zoom calls. As Drake said, I learned working from the negatives could make for better pictures. 
As we look back on those times with each of our own unique memories, we must recall the joy that came out of the little things, stimulus checks, quarantine memes, but most of all, Tiger King. <laughs> Moving on through the journey of hoping to return to normalcy, we end up where we are today, worn out, nervous, but slightly relieved. We made it through with a little help from Photomath, MLA citation generators, and Quizlet, but we made it. For many of us, this will be our first summer in a while that we don't have to worry about reading two or three books in a matter of weeks because we've procrastinated or math packets that we've completely forgotten how to do. With this extra time, I hope you uh, use it to find new friends, interesting hobbies, and have fun before you go off and start this new chapter in life. I have had a lot of fun with this class over the past two years. We've had interesting circle dime discussions, our homecoming sweep, and my personal favorite, my two broken bones. <laughs> this class has so much to offer and is very talented, like the insanely athletic Justin Davis and Ashley Henderson, amazing artists like Abby Jennings and BJ Smith, show-stopping actors like Chandler Donnellan and Katie Savage, the admirable work ethic of Michael Williams and Maddie Bell, and of course, the credible moonwalking of Christian Morrison. <laughs> this class has earned a lot of awards in sports, music, theater, art, and academics, and as we go out into the world, I hope that these award-winning individuals continue to impact the world in a, a positive way. Now, as we, as we celebrate the zenith of our academic career thus far, our watershed, let us continue forward with our unsurpassed pride in and unbridled love for one another and accentuate all the accolades our fellow classmates have amassed over this time here at Harding Academy. If you couldn't tell, this speech is brought to you by Mimbean. <laughs> now that I've become verbose and superfluous, let me conclude my speech. I am honored to be able to represent the class of 2023, as there are many other individuals who would make amazing representatives of this class. Now, according to my research I've done for this moment, I need to finish off this speech with a heartfelt message that inspires you to be better versions of yourself. So, in the world's words of Dr. Seuss, sometimes you never know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. For those of you who have a longer past at Harding than I, whether it be your high school career or your whole life, Look back on your fond moments with your closest friends. These memories are what will help you navigate the future and bring comfort to you when you need it most. So enjoy this moment for as long as you can, and when it becomes a memory, cherish it. Thank you, and God bless. Hi, everyone. Before I get started, I first want to thank all of the family, friends, Harding faculty, and other members of the Harding community for coming to honor the graduation of myself and my fellow classmates. In particular, I want to recognize my family for everything they've done to help me get here. Without their support, I wouldn't have gotten the honor to address all of you today. When I began work on my speech, I, like Wyatt, initially turned to the internet for help. Unfortunately, this didn't really bear fruit. I poured over countless videos of graduation speeches, but I wanted to make sure my speech was unique to myself as well as to our class. In search of a fresh perspective, I turned to my friends, but to be frank, their advice was less than helpful. <laughs> I think the illustrious Katie Savage summed up their advice best when she said, just please make sure it's under four minutes. I really want to graduate. <laughs> They wanted me to make sure that I didn't waste any time. Using my time well is important to me because time doesn't last forever, and once a moment's over, it's gone. Our class and our school have felt the loss of time all too acutely due to lockdowns, canceled events, delays, and other setbacks, so we understand that a moment shouldn't be squandered. I thought for a long while about how I should use this time I've been given to speak to the class most effectively, and ultimately, I decided that I don't want to look back at everything we've done together. Most of you were there for the highs of Candlelight Devo and Homecoming this year, and the lows of virtual school and sophomore year. <laughs> but after tonight, most of us will be separated. Fellow members of the class of 23, since this may be the last time we're all together for a while, I would like to use my time in the best way that I can. I want to thank each of you personally for what you've done for me and for this school. First off, I want to thank Wyatt for his speech today. You gave me a lot to look up to. <laughs> Next, I want to thank RJ and Lauren, Mr. and Mrs. Harding, for all that they do to reflect what Harding means. Your leadership and organization as president and VP have made this year great. I want to thank Chandler for keeping us organized during homecoming this year. 
Without your leadership, we couldn't have swept in one jug. I also want to thank Maddie and Shelby for their leadership as class officers. All of the class events this year have been great, and both of you also helped a ton during homecoming. I want to thank Sky and Kyle for their work on the senior video. The video this year was an amazing way to reflect on an amazing year, and we could all tell how much effort and care went into it. Next up, I want to thank Brooks for everything he does to keep Harding running. Whether it's tech, organization, or anything else that just needs to happen, you work without complaints and work well. I want to thank Maddie, Hallie, Kaya, and Jada for always being the first to participate in our discussions in Bible class. Your willingness to speak in class underscores each of your outspokenness and your support for our class. Also, I want to thank Justin and Tristan. I never know what to expect from either of you. <laughs> and you both make it easier for all of us to keep going. It's clear that you both care a ton about this class. I want to thank Emma Taylor for bringing energy to the class. You weren't here from the very start, but you've become an important part of our community. I want to thank Natalie and Jordan for hanging out with our group on the from the band and acapella trip this year. Neither of you are attention seeking, but your personalities shine through whenever you're around. Next, I want to thank Abby, Bella, Ava, and Megan for being so able to mesh with our class quickly. It feels like you're all so important to our class and you've been a huge part of all of our senior years. I want to thank Christian for the life he brings to every class event. You bring something unique to everything we do as a class, and I think I can speak for all of us by saying it wouldn't be the same without you. Additionally, I want to thank Cooper, Sarah, Martha, and Jonathan for hanging out with me during government. Each of you is so talented in your own unique way, and you put so much work into your passions. Thanks for helping me recover after calculus. Next, I want to thank Miles and Sarah for caring about people in our class and outside of it. Your World Cup for Pearls soccer tournament showed how much you want to help others. And you bring a servant worker energy to our entire class. I want to thank Em and Daniel for chilling with me during lunch. You're both very unique, fun people, and I'm glad we got to hang out. Next, I want to thank Yeun and BJ for helping us make it through Calculus PC. Your positivity, humor, and commiseration in class helped us to stay motivated. I also want to thank Josh, Ethan, Blake, and Carol for all they do in band. Each of you has worked hard in SWB this year with new music, new parts, new solos, and for one of you, a new school. You all represent to me what Senior Wind Ensemble should be. Next, I want to thank Nina for a great yearbook this year. You gave all of us an amazing reflection on our last year at Harding, and it's a lasting reminder of the memories that we've made here. I want to thank Lydia for being an outgoing and inclusive person, and also for sending the whole school that won anatomy assignment by accident. <laughs> you make everyone feel like they're an important part of our class. It was great hanging out with you in AP Chem and Pre-Cal last year. I want to thank Katie and Anne for being the real Elsa and Anna during Frozen Junior this year. My high school experience wouldn't have been the same without you, and I'm so, so lucky to consider you my friends. I want to thank Milan for praying for mental health every day in AP Bio. The way you think about how everyone else is doing daily is admirable. I want to thank Ali for always bringing joy to our class. You bring positivity to everything you're a part of at Harding. I want to thank Genesis, Dilo, Sammy, Michael, and Morgan for making our engineering class this year great. Whether we were getting work done or trying to explain to Caleb that Michael Jordan is the GOAT, not LeBron, <laughs> you all brought unique perspectives to our class. Harding wouldn't be the same without you. I want to thank Ashley for bringing energy to our class. You are amazingly talented and your personality held our class together. Finally, I want to thank Aiden and Pierce for always having my back. We've been through a lot together, and both of you care so much about our friends and our class. I couldn't have made it through without you guys. I love you guys. Ultimately, thank you all. Without any one of you, our high school experience would have been incomplete. I think I can speak for the other classes and our teachers in saying that Harding will be different without all of you here. But even though we're moving on from Harding, the impact we've had here will continue, and so will the bonds that we formed with each other. 
What's more, I'm confident that you will bring all of the things about each of you that I'm thankful for and countless more things that I haven't had time to mention into whatever place you end up in. Our moment here is ending, but there will be countless moments for all of you to give of yourselves for others. I am confident that all of you will do so because of what you've done for me, for this class, and for this school. Once again, thank all of you. Thank you, Wyatt and Flynn. The class of 2023 was asked to select a speaker for their graduation ceremony. They chose Mr. Jacob E. Wallace, who has been their science teacher for several classes. Mr. Wallace graduated from Harding Academy in 2006 and then went on to Freed Hardeman University where he earned a BA in biology. He later received his MA in excellence in teaching from Harding University. Mr. Wallace has taught for 13 years, the past five here at his alma mater. Mr. Wallace has served as the junior class sponsor and the varsity athletics statistician, and he has been named the incoming chair for the science department beginning next year. He is also our resident Harding history aficionado. He and his wife, Becky, to whom he will be married for 149 months next Thursday, are active at Germantown Church of Christ. Mr. Wallace knows these students well, and we are thankful he could be with us tonight. And I want to uh, welcome Mr. Jacob Wallace to the podium. Please silence your cell phones. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> I hope you've had a sa sensational Saturday thus far. I wish to add my voice to those who have welcomed you to this, the 65th graduation ceremony of Harding Academy. This is the 53rd to have occurred in this room and on this stage. Indeed, it is a special time and place. So there I was, 6,207 days ago, a young man ready to graduate from this very institution. This Monday marks 17 years to the day since I sat in those seats, specifically the seat that Morgan is sitting in right now, ready to cross the stage as you're about to do. I'm highly honored that you selected me to stand before you as a speaker. I was asked how long I would speak. Well, whereas your graduation has been announced as to taking place on May 13th, I promise we will get out of here before midnight. I am flush with memories of our time together. I recall silly things like arguments over who stole whose cup dances, even though you all got them from TikTok. I recall watching uh, many of you recently running around the courtyard trying to quick pick up beans as part of an AP bio lab. That was entertaining. I remember others of you counting cars on, as uh, a part of an AP environmental science lab of late. I smile when I think of the many times I've got Sarah's name wrong out of nowhere. I chuckle when I think of the oddball experiences you've had. I won't call any names, but Harriers, please don't run into a bus. I recall teaching most of you multiple times. I taught 48 of you in total. 37 I taught twice. Nine I taught thrice. Two I taught four times. I'm sorry, Blake and Sammy. That may have been too much Mr. Wallace for anyone. I recall meeting most of you in a time when I only got to see your eyes due to health concerns. In fact, I didn't meet one of you in person until after I'd finished teaching you. I recall more serious times, like the night in 2021 when we sat in a circle out there lit only by candlelight and expressed our appreciation for each other. I am forever touched that even though I intended it to be a junior tradition going forward from the beginning, you saw it as yours, or ours, and gave me grief for sharing it with the activity as an activity with the next class. I remember praying with you so many times, in so many classes, and so many heartfelt requests from you, and you even asking me what I wanted to pray for personally. I feel I've gotten the joy of watching you take the masks off, literally and metaphorically, as you have found yourselves and gotten the confidence to be at ease with each other. 
Alas, I believe I am not here to just be sentimental. This will likely bring tears to my eyes. I stand before you, I believe, burdened with glorious purpose to give some final advice before you leave these halls in which your hopes abide. Onward. The first thing I want you to challenge you to do is to love God. That may seem like trite, trite, a trite, blah, 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 let me say that right. That may seem like a trite expected bit of advice, but I assure you that it is far from just that. You see, I challenge you to truly love God. This God is not a good luck charm to be invoked in difficult times. No. It is not good enough to be a kind person. No, friends. Without personal saving faith in the, faith in the Lord, even the best person will not find themselves eternally with him. Far too many people claim to love God in this world, but that claim may be mere lip service. If one is to follow the Lord, one oft finds it difficult to do so. That may discourage you, but our God is wonderfully merciful. And I challenge you to realize that if your walk with God in no way challenges you to become a better person, I posit that you are not truly following God. Indeed, Jesus says in John 14 that if we love him, we are to keep his commandments. That is not to say that Christianity is a list of do's and don'ts, but rather that he calls us to love and worship him, something that cannot be done by proxy, as in watching someone else worship and thinking that checks a box. He calls us to love others and live in a way he approves. That includes our word choices, entertainment choices, and sometimes friend choices. One cannot legitimately follow God unless he is intentionally trying to follow him better. Many defend themselves by saying only God can judge them. The truth is he will, will and has said how he will. God calls us to come as we are to him, but he never says to leave as we were. This is not meant as a scary threat, but as an imploration from the one who loves us more than anyone to have a relationship with him and live a life set apart. The good news is that following God is not a solo effort. Beyond the fact that the Spirit is with you as long as you pursue a relationship with them, you can walk the Christian walk with fellow followers of his in a church community. I cannot emphasize this enough. Get to church. While sitting in a pew is certainly better than laying in a bed, it is more than just that. A church is a community of imperfect people who love God and will imperfectly try to do so. They will disappoint you. They will mess up. But guess what? You have and will disappoint people. I know I have. This, that is not the time to run away, but rather to run together and embrace. Church is where Christians are found. To intentionally avoid churches, to claim that one can be spiritual but not religious, is a mistake. I will be even stronger. It is a lie from Satan himself. Paul chastises those who abandon church in Hebrews 10. Don't try to run the Christian race by yourself. It's too hard. Be set apart. Be holy. Be part of a holy community. Secondly, I challenge you to love people. One of my greatest frustrations in 35 years of life is watching the siloization of thought common in this world. I applaud people's being, on average, more educated than ever. I am thankful that people are so committed to justice in this world. However, I strongly object to cutting anyone off in your life with whom you disagree. I'm not saying you have to be best friends with everyone, but you need to expose yourself to dissent. You need people in your life with whom you disagree, because I promise you that they will help you. They will help you see, uh, keep you sharp in what you believe in. They help you realize the flaws that you are thinking. They will help you remember that your ideological opposites are people too. In our quest to stand up for marginalized people, in our effort to love everyone, let's not forget to love everyone. Remember that Christ, whom we all set as our example to follow, dined with the man who he knew would terminally betray him in less than 12 hours. Make an effort to not cut people out of your life, but show your love to them by treating them with respect anyway. Third, in our effort to love others, we ought to remember to love them as we love ourselves. Yes, that means we must love ourselves. College is a time of oft detrimental short-term bad decisions. Love yourself enough to take care of yourself. Also, do not love yourself more than others. The current zeitgeist is one of self-care at times that runs amok. Yes, absolutely take care of yourself, but do not forget that society needs and God asks you to sacrifice yourself for others. Not all the time, however, the I gotta look out for me, my wealth, my ambition, my desire attitude is incongruous with the greater good of what God calls us to do if we truly love others. Fourth, accept the chance of failure and embrace opportunity. That idea can be very uncomfortable for some or maybe all of you. 
I still recall standing on the porch of Paul Gray Hall in Henderson, Tennessee on August 19, 2006, realizing that I was in a place far away from home with no family and only maybe five people on campus who knew who I was. Having grown up in this place and being rather well known by many, that was very uncomfortable. Let's be honest, sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. That uncertainty was good, though, the uncertainty was good, though, in that it pushed me to make new friends and experience new things. Make mistakes. Don't make my mistakes. Make your own. Don't take 24 credit hours in a semester just to keep a scholarship. You might end up failing a class, like Bible. I'm sure that's a sin somewhere. Don't lose your student ID. I went through six of those in four years. That gets expensive. Now that I've warned you about those, I'm sure that you will fall into your own missteps. Take risks. I read recently that yours may be one of the most risk-adverse generations in some time. While that may be good in some ways, taking a chance is important to advancement. Ships are built in harbors, but designed to take on the challenges of the seas. Without accepting the uncertainty and chance of failure, many great achievements would not have happened. Don't stand on the sideline making fun of those who take chances and fail. To adapt Kennedy, take on challenges not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Scholars, you're going to a place where you're able to start anew. Some of you have been in Harding for a long time. You may have found yourself in the same activities or social roles for quite a while now. This change is awesome in that it provides you the opportunity to try new things. Write for a newspaper. Work on a campus radio or TV studio. Try out for chorus. Try out for a play. Play a new sport. Run for SGA. Eat new food. I discovered cheesecake in college. Mm. Take an art class. Join a club. Go on a mission trip. Find a church far from campus that is not the cool one to attend and see how you can work for God there. Hang out in the cafeteria for hours, drifting table to table, just getting to know people. Be social. Ask that girl or guy out. Even when you are terrified, they will turn you down. They might turn, they might turn into the love of your life and the single greatest blessing you've ever had. <laughs> Opportunity... Opportunity is all around. Why don't you take it? I believe you're going to make it after all. Fifthly, make new friends but keep the old. Scholars, many of you have been surrounded by the same people for many years now, perhaps your whole lives. Now you're ready to launch off into a new place surrounded by hundreds, maybe thousands of new people. The chance to meet new friends is awesome. Sometimes it can seem overwhelming, but I challenge you to do it anyway. I recall at some point early in college, realizing that I was being socially lazy and not making many friends. I determined to change that. I resolved to sit out on one of the roughly 20,000 swings on Free Hardman's campus and see who I met. It worked. I met new friends and got to hang out with some of the few I'd already met. Some of my dearest friends and favorite life experiences are with those new people. I hung out with them, played cards, frisbee, basketball, racquetball. I traveled the country eventually with many of them. I still keep in touch with many of them to this day. While the thrill of new friendships is rewarding, do not forget that those, these people around you, to quote Sewell, look to your right and look to your left. These people are your classmates, your comrades, your teammates, your friends. One of those cool Harding things is that you get to select your graduation seats. I once suggested that years ago at another school where I taught and they thought I was crazy. I love it because you are truly surrounded by friends. Do not forget these people. They will likely not all be going forward with you, at least all of them, but you have been with them through some formative times. Keep in touch. I still have a group text on my phone with some of my closest friends from high school. It brightens my day whenever I get a text from Michael or Nick or Tim or anyone else from my past. They truly are a blessing to me. Sixthly, thank your mentors. The fact that each of you has gotten this far as a result of a number of people pouring into your lives. They have supported you through difficult times and celebrated with you in happy times. They have tolerated you when you were going through that difficult stage in life of being a teenager. They have pushed you when you needed to be because you had given up on being your best. By the way, they did not do that because they were mad at you generally, but frustrated because they see how great you could be and you weren't getting there. It's okay. 
I know you had those people because I had some of them too. I was supported. I was loved. I was chastised when I was a jerk. I was punished when I needed to be corrected. I know that I would not be where I am without my mentors, and thus I know that is true of you. For some of you, that I have been that mentor, talking to you through difficult days, cheering you on in moments of triumph, and pushing you to use all the gifts that God has given each of you. I encourage you to thank your mentors. Don't get me wrong. Those who love you take enough happiness in seeing you grow, but you owe them thanks. Give it to them. I can tell you that the downside of teaching is that upon our eventual retirement, it seems that we fade from memory fast as the student body turns over. In those days where we question our impact, it feels good to be reminded of those whom we have helped. Recently, I rewatched Mr. Holland's Opus, a movie classic, for the first time in many years. There's a final scene in that film upon the occasion of Mr. Holland's retirement where his former students do a surprise celebration. It's funny, I used to watch that unfazed, and now it brings tears to my eyes. Scholars, mentors generally, and teachers specifically, are involved in your lives because they want to help you. Nothing brightens a mentor's day more than hearing what impact he has had. When I received my master's degree in Searcy years ago, one of my mentors was living there at the time. I went by his house and told him that he was the reason I was a teacher. It made him smile. So write those thank you notes. Befriend them on Facebook. Invite them to your weddings. Stop by and see them just to chat whenever you're visiting in town. Go to a baseball game with them. Go golfing with them. Maybe just go to lunch with them. That is something I do with a mentor of mine every summer, and I promise you that man still pours into my life. Few things make me happier than to hear him say that he's proud of me, and I thank him for the love that he has shown to me when I certainly didn't deserve it. I'm proud of you. When you walk out those doors tonight, don't make the, the, that the last time your mentors see you. Thank them all. Seventh, from, remember from where you came, you have each been blessed by being a student at Harding Academy. It may not seem like that on days when you had 5,000 Membean assignments to complete, or you had to be told to shave for the 20th time, or you couldn't play the song you wanted at an event. However, this place is special. Very few schools in Memphis attempt to educate you through the lens of God. Very few schools try to do more than just push you across the stage. We want, perhaps more than academic growth, you to grow in Christ. This place is great, and I think you are a credit to this school. I have said before, and will again, that I think the single greatest gift my parents gave me was enrolling me in this school years ago. Yes, you are my students, but we share another bond. I've walked these same halls, sat in these same classes, learned from some of these same teachers, sat through the same chapels, played on the same fields. I wasn't the first, and you won't be the last. We, can, we are kindred spirits as part of a tapestry that stretches back some 70 years full of many wonderful people. When I think about the fact that I share a diploma with Brett Gooch, Amy Murphy, Glenda Kaiser, Cheryl McBride, Paige Essery, Lisa Joe Perdue, Don Gilrith, Lori Arnett, Shana Ifa, Lori Underwood, Laura Burns, Amy Turman, Wendy Joachim, Dana Palacios, Rebecca Simler, Scott Frizzell, Hannah Douglas, Rachel Cox, Charlie Gonder, Sloan Scott, Denise Finer, Nellie Shelby, all of which work here now. As well as many of your parents, uncles, aunts, and siblings, it gives me chills. It makes me smile. Now that you and I share that as well, I feel honored all the more. We will always have a teacher-student relationship. We will also be peers at some level as alumni of this academy. An expression I once used in reference to an alumnus whom I mentioned in class, I will use now. You are forever one of us. What more can I say, scholars? I could keep going, but I feel the pressure of time is on us. This is one of those situations where I feel I have one last chance to say all the things I wanted to say, but I'm running out of time. What else? Should I quote Steve Prefontaine and say that giving less than your best is to sacrifice the gift? Should I give academic advice by quoting Chris Stahlberg's repetition is the key to education? Or Wendy Heaton, who would say, start with what you know. Should I quote William Daniels? Perhaps that would be appropriate. You see, as the TV show Boy Meets World was drawing to a close, in its penultimate scene, Corey, Sean, and Tabanga go to see Mr. Feeney for advice one last time. He says, to dream, try, and do good. Not do well, do good. Keep that in mind. What more can I say than this? You are special people, special to so many others. Your family, friends, ministers, teachers, and coaches surround you. I want to say that personally, I once heard an analogy for school as a party that you've been invited to. 
You arrive and find that's been going for some time. You find a conversation and join in. As you talk, some people leave the party as their hour of departure has come, yet others arrive and join in. Eventually, you check your watch and realize that you must leave. You bid your farewells and you walk away so greatly enriched, yet you realize the party will continue without you. You have contributed here and will in the future wherever you are. To quote Tennyson, we are all a part, we are all a part of all we have met. Thank you for contributing to me. To invert what was once fairly said to you, I believe that God is working in this class. <laughs> Scholars, our time together is drawing to a close. It's been a joy to spend this time with you today. The greatest joy I find in teaching at this Christian school is the hope that even if we never meet again here, I hopefully get the joy of spending eternity with you as we have to cross the bar. Please stay faithful to God because I want to see you all in heaven one day. Remember, as I wrote to you in all of your goodbye notes, seek God above all else. As you walk out these doors for the final time, wherever you find yourself, whether you are moving at neon light speed or even faster, we at the Academy are always here to pray for you and support you in your godly endeavors. I close with a quote from Fyodor Dostoevsky, who once wrote, even though we may be involved with most, the most important affairs, achieve distinction, or fall into some great misfortune, all the same, let us never forget how good we all felt once here, all together, united by such a good and kind feelings that made us two perhaps better than we actually are. I love you all. TTFN. Thank you all. I am pleased to announce that the 52 seniors in the class of 2023 have been offered over $7 million in scholarships and have accepted scholarships totaling just over $3.5 million. Mr. Williamson, it is my pleasure to announce to you that these 52 students in the Harding Academy class of 2023 have met the requirements for graduation, and with your permission, we will now present them with their diplomas. Friends, family members, guests, we ask that you not applaud or celebrate audibly for individuals as they cross the stage. Your applause or celebration will obscure the announcement of information about your student and likely the next student's name. Each parent here wants and deserves to hear his or her child's name announced clearly and without distraction. We will recognize the group as a whole at the end. Thank you in advance for your cooperation and help. Will the first row please rise? <laughs> Alyssa Marin Moultrie has been at Harding for three years. She will be attending Lipscomb University. She is receiving the NCSA scholarship, the Hope Scholarship, and the trustee scholarship. Carol Almeida Camargo has been at Harding for one year. She will be attending Wachita Baptist University, where she is receiving the Wachita Global Scholarship and the Wachita Founder Scholarship. Chandler Lee Donlan has been at Harding for 16 years. She will be attending Harding University and is receiving the Christian Leadership and Service Scholarship, the Founders Scholarship, the Christian School Graduate Scholarship, the Tennessee Special Scholarship, as well as the Christian School Achievement Scholarship. Sarah Grace Guidry has been at Harding for 13 years. She will be attending Harding University, where she is receiving an academic scholarship, the Christian School Achievement Scholarship, the Christian School Graduate Scholarship, and the Tennessee Special Scholarship. Corwin Flynn Wilkes has been at Harding for 13 years. He will be attending Rhodes College, where he is receiving the Hope Scholarship, the General Assembly Merit Scholarship, the Ned McWhirter Scholarship, and the Cambridge Scholarship. Wyatt Kirtley Thompson has been at Harding for two years. He will be attending the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. He is receiving the Hope Scholarship, the UT Volunteer Scholarship, and the General Assembly Merit Scholarship. Ethan Justice Noble has been at Harding for 13 years. He will be attending Harding University. He is receiving the Presidential Grant and the Christian School Graduate Scholarship. Jonathan Babatunde Alaklekan 
Akembe, has been at Harding for two years. He will be attending the University of Memphis. He is receiving the HOPE Scholarship. Christian Alejandro Morrison has been at Harding for 15 years. He will be attending the University of Memphis and is receiving the HOPE Scholarship, the Memphis Advantage Scholarship, and the Trustee Award. William Brooks Tomlinson has been at Harding for 17 years. He will be attending Harding University and he is receiving the Harding Employee Discount and a Band Scholarship. Will the next row rise and come forward? Janine Mahala Grizzle has been at Harding for six years. She will be taking a gap year in order to pursue a career in acting. Catherine Linnell Savage has been at Harding for 13 years and will be attending Harding University. She is receiving the Admissions Drawing Scholarship, the Academic Achievement Scholarship, the Christian School Achievement Scholarship, the Christian School Graduate Scholarship, the Christian Leadership and Service Scholarship, as well as the Tennessee Special Scholarship. Ann Barton Price has been at Harding for four years. She will be attending Harding University. She is receiving an academic scholarship, the Tennessee Special Scholarship, the Christian School Achievement Scholarship, and the Christian School Graduate Scholarship. Morgan Brianna Jackson has been at Harding for four years. She will be attending the University of Memphis. She is receiving the Educational Opportunity Grant. Martha Ward Umber has been at Harding for five years. She will be attending the University of Memphis, where she is receiving the River City Partnership Scholarship, the Hope Scholarship, and the Provost Scholarship. Madeline Grace Liberto has been at Harding for 13 years and will be attending the University of Mississippi, where she is receiving alumni awards, academic merit awards, the J. Means Non-Resident Scholarship, the J.W. Wobble Davidson Scholarship, and the Herb Dewey's Alumni Association Scholarship. Daniel LaVon Nelson has been at Harding for 13 years. He will be attending Christian Brothers University and is receiving a CBU Interest Scholarship. Miles James Avery has been at Harding for 15 years. He will be attending Lipscomb University, where he is receiving the Bison Achievement Award and the NCSA Scholarship. Blake Leonard Oswell has been at Harding for 15 years. He will be attending Morehouse College and is receiving a Morehouse Academic Scholarship. Michael Anthony Williams Jr. has been at Harding for 16 years. He will be attending Lipscomb University where he is receiving an Academic Scholarship, the NCSA Scholarship, and the HOPE Scholarship. Will the next row rise and come forward? Justin Sean Davis has been at Harding for 16 years and will be attending Rhodes College. He is receiving the Rhodes Institutional Grants and the HOPE Scholarship. Lawrence Elizabeth Weber has been at Harding for 16 years. She will be attending Lipscomb University where she is receiving the HOPE Scholarship, the General Assembly Merit Scholarship, and the Trustee Scholarship. Isabella Grace Tishner has been at Harding for nine years. She will be attending the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, and is receiving the Tennessee Student Assistance Award, the Hope Scholarship, the Aspire Award, the Tennessee Pledge Scholarship, the UT Leeds Scholarship, and the UT Orange and White Scholarship. Shelby Ray Williams has been at Harding for nine years. She will be attending Spelman College, where she is receiving a Spelman Institution Grant. Skylar Gabrielle Ryan Bean has been at Harding for 11 years. She will be attending Middle Tennessee State University. Lydia Hastings Hawley has been at Harding for eight years. She will be attending Harding University and is receiving an academic scholarship and the Dick Clinton Memorial Scholarship. 
Emma Brown has been at Harding for four years and will be attending the University of Memphis as a recipient of the Cecil C. Humphreys Presidential Scholarship. Sarah Ann Albertini has been at Harding for four years. She will be attending the University of Southern Mississippi, receiving the Freshman Ec Academic Excellence Scholarship, the Honors College Scholar Award, as well as the Baxter Global Scholarship. Natalie Sakura Miyagi Herbers has been at Harding for five years. She will be attending Hofstra University, where she is receiving the Tuition Exchange Award. Jordan Nia Nicole West has been at Harding for six years and will be attending Fisk University. She is receiving the Fisk Outstanding Scholars and Leaders Award and the Hope Scholarship. Will the next row rise and come forward? Aiden Davis Ethal has been at Harding for 17 years. He will be attending Harding University where he is receiving the Chancellor Scholarship, the Christian School Graduate Award, and the Tennessee Special Scholarship. Pierce Metter Robinson has been at Harding for four years. He will be attending Rhodes College and is receiving the Deal Scholarship, the Bonner Service Scholarship, the Hope Scholarship, and the General Assembly Merit Scholarship. Bryant Lewis Smith Jr. has been at Harding for six years and will be attending Mississippi State University. He is receiving the MSU Black Alumni Council Scholarship, the Freshman Academic Scholarship, the Colvard Future Leader Scholarship, the Non-Resident Tuition Award, the Eugene and Barbara Clark Endeavor Scholarship, the Aaron Rimrow Parson Loyalty Scholarship, and the Cindy, Cindy W. Simpson Loyalty Scholarship, as well as the NAACP AXO Award. Sammy Muhammad has been at Harding for 14 years. He will be attending the University of Memphis and is receiving the Hope Scholarship, the Tennessee Student Assistance Award, and the Dean Scholarship. Genesis Jamar Branch has been at Harding for six years. He will be attending the University of Memphis and is receiving the Tennessee Student Assistance Award. Ashley Nicole Henderson has been at Harding for two years. She will be attending the University of Memphis where she is receiving the Hope Scholarship, the Tennessee Student Assistance Award, the Aspire Award, and the Memphis Advantage Scholarship. Yeun An has been at Harding for one year and will be attending the University of Memphis. She is receiving the University of Memphis International Merit Scholarship. Hallie Marie Johnson has been at Harding for six years. She will be attending Middle Tennessee State University where she is receiving the Tennessee Student Assistance Award. Jada Nicole Mitchell has been at Harding for six years and will be attending Mississippi State University where she is receiving the Old Main Scholarship as well as the Freshman Academic Excellence Scholarship. Micaiah Nicole Malone has been at Harding for six years. She will be attending Christian Brothers University where she is receiving the Princeton Prize in Race Relations Scholarship, the LaSallean Scholarship, an Alumni Scholarship, the Campus Visit Scholarship, the Hope Scholarship and the Tennessee Student Assistance Award, as well as an athletic, as well as an athletic scholarship. Will the next row rise and come forward? Cooper Earl Manning has been at Harding for 16 years and will be attending Harding University. He is receiving an academic scholarship, the Christian School Graduate Scholarship, and the Presidential Grant. Abigail Lee Jennings has been at Harding for one and a half years. She will be attending Harding University and is receiving the Chancellor's Scholarship, the Christian Leadership and Service Scholarship, the Christian School Graduate Scholarship, and the Tennessee Special Scholarship. Megan Elise Ammons has been at Harding for one year. She will be attending Lipscomb University, where she is receiving the Hope Scholarship, an Academic Scholarship, the NCSA Scholarship, the L. Max Lipscomb Merit Award, a Musical Theater Scholarship, and a Chick-fil-A Leadership Scholarship. 
Emma Marie Taylor has been at Harding for three years. She will be attending Middle Tennessee State University and is receiving the Hope Scholarship. Ava Renee Anderson has been at Harding for one year. She will be attending Mississippi Valley State University and she is receiving the Valley First Scholarship. Milan Manaya Janine Wade has been at Harding for two years and will be attending Clark Atlanta University. She is receiving the UNCF General Scholarship. Tristan Rashawn Parker has been at Harding for three years. He will be attending Florida Institute of Technology where he is receiving the Panther Fund Grant, the Panther Fund Academic Grant, and the Educational Opportunity Grant. D'Angelo Love II has been at Harding for six years. He will be attending the University of Memphis. He is receiving the Hope Scholarship, the Aspire Award, the Educational Opportunity Grant, the Tennessee Student Assistance Award, and the Dick Clinton Memorial Scholarship. Ronnie Lavelle Freeman Jr. has been at Harding for seven years and will be attending Mississippi State University. He is receiving the Culver Future Leader Scholarship, a Freshman Academic Scholarship, the North Central Electric Scholarship, the MLK Tournament Scholarship, and the Jordan Kingsley Sanders Memorial Endowed Scholarship. Joshua Jerome Tolliver Jr. has been at Harding for six years. He will be attending Alabama A&M University where he is receiving the Thurgood Marshall Scholarship. Kyle Edward Graney has been at Harding for four years. He will be attending Middle Tennessee State University where he is receiving the Hope Scholarship. Madison Bell Bachman has been at Harding for three years. She will be attending Rhodes College where she is receiving the Rhodes Grant, the Rhodes Room and Board Grant, the Hope Scholarship, and the Deal Scholarship. From Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. We kneel before the Father from whom the whole family of believers in heaven and on earth derives its name. We pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And we pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and high and long and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. In a moment, Mr. Williamson will come to the microphone and give the graduates some special instructions. But first, Mr. Williamson, board members, faculty, parents, family, alumni, and friends, I, pres I present Harding Academy's 2023 graduates. <laughs> Mr. Williamson. <laughs> Mr. Williamson, will you come and address the class of 2023? It's one of my uh, favorite things because I know that you were all given very strict directions. <laughs> and then you were told that at a certain time you could let it all out. <laughs> and, and praise God, right now is that time that we can let it all out and celebrate this great class.
And first, I want to say thank you to parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters who were given those instructions and who followed them. Thank you very much. We hold these traditions very dear to our heart, and we appreciate you respecting them. Class of 2023, family, friends, and guests, my deep hope for every Harding Academy student and staff member is that they will appreciate that they are all uniquely created in the image of God and individually necessary as threads woven into the rich tapestry that is his kingdom so that together we can impact the world for his glory. Graduates, there is no doubt you all are uniquely created in God's image. You're woven together and about to head out to impact our world in big ways for his glory. We're near the end of the ceremony that is filled with numerous traditions, rich history, and beautiful decorum. The turning of the tassel is one of those traditions used to signify a person's transition from candidate to graduate. Throughout the ceremony, you've worn your tassel on the right side of your cap. Please move the tassel now to the left side, signifying this important transition. <laughs> Graduates, similarly, since receiving your class rings, you've always worn it facing you. Now, please turn your rings around so they will face the world. This turning of the ring symbolizes the end of one season of life and the beginning of an exciting <laughs> new adventure. Graduates, your journey at Harding Academy is now over. Every year, as I look out on this audience, I'm flooded, obviously, with a variety of emotions. Students, parents, grandparents, and extended family members, you all have played such an important role in creating the rich tapestry that is Harding Academy. And we're grateful for your partnership. Thank you for entrusting your most precious blessing in life with us. You've made a tremendous investment in the lives of your children, and we never take this obligation lightly. Doing life together with you all in this school community has been a tremendous blessing. Colossians 2, verses 6 and 7 reads, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. This is my prayer for you, that you will continue to live your lives in him, just as you have been taught in this place, and that you will be thankful for the many wonderful gifts you have been given. Graduates, please stand and remove your caps. Please remove your tassels from your cap. Those are yours to keep as a memento. And remember, when you're given the instructions, please toss your caps straight up <laughs> and straight down. Grandparents, aunts, and uncles, if you're near, take cover. Congratulations to the class of 2023. Graduates, you may now toss your caps. We will, now, we will now be led in our benediction by our current uh, board chair, Mr. Steve Avery, who is also the parent of one of these graduates. Mr. Avery? Thank you, Trent. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you, uh, Trent, and this administration for being 
disciplers for um, our kids over these past uh, years. And I, I'm extremely grateful for what this school has meant to my family for the last 26 years. I'm very grateful. Class of 2023, um, gosh, man, I've known most of you guys since you were in the first grade, and I'm going to miss you. My deep hope for you is that you'll continue to follow God and put him in uh, first in everything that you do. And just to be ready to accept the many blessings that he has planned for you. Um, will you please pray with me? Dear God, uh, we thank you so much for just allowing us to gather here this evening to um, just experience this wonderful celebration and accomplishments of this, uh, this beautiful class. Uh, Lord, we ask you to just to give them courage, give them wisdom, give them boldness, uh, give them the audacity to be different and do different. Lord, we ask you to just continue to, to be with them as they enter into this next phase of their life. Um, just lead them, guide them, uh, continue to bless them. We ask you to uh, just, we're thankful for their, their families that are here this evening and have supported them to this point in their life and, and just so much more to come. Uh, Lord, we ask you just to be with us as we leave this place this evening and keep us safe. In your son Jesus we pray. Amen.